Hi everyone, it's Lori and welcome to the channel. In today's episode, I'm going to try to do a little 10 minute edit for you. And this one is all about adding a touch of color to your images. So whether it's a flower image or a landscape scene, it can be really nice to bring a touch of color from your subject into your background or foreground. So let's jump in and get started. I'm gonna show you three different programs, three different ways to add a touch of color to your image. So for this first, we are going to use Lightroom Classic. And Lightroom Classic has got some easy ways to add a touch of color to your image. The first method that I like to do is the old fashioned linear gradient. So linear gradient is under mask. And when you click on it, you can drag the gradient. What's great about it is it's a very soft runoff. So the color starts heavier and then it fades. So I put it in this corner because this is where I'm wanting to add the touch of color. So now that I've got the gradient mask, what I'm going to do is come down to tint and I want to add a little bit of pink tone. So I'm going to start with the tint, then I'm going to use the hue slider and I'm going to come over till I get to that magenta, kind of magenta pink. Now I'm going to reduce the saturation because saturation is like the amount of paint on the brush. So I just want to soften that. Next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up to my mask and do subtract and grab a brush. And I want to just remove some of the effect around the center of the flower, keeping it on the edges. So I want it to be a very, a very subtle, soft addition of the pink. Okay, so that is the first. Now what I can also do is add a little bit of dehaze on the mask which is gonna brighten it, but also give it a little bit more softness since this image was already super soft and dreamy, adding a little dehaze can help. Now that's the first step. What I'd like to do now is add a second gradient. And for that, I'm going to do the radial gradient. So I'm gonna come in and make almost like a vignette here. Now I want to click the three dots next to my mask and I want to invert the mask. That's gonna put it on this outside area. Now what I'm going to do is come back down and add a little bit of that pink tone. So we're just going to slide that over and we should see it in just a minute. Take off our overlay. There we go. It's kind of pretty heavy. So I'm going to take the um, amount slider right here on the mask and I am going to reduce it and I'm going to increase the feather. So I want it to be really, really soft and I'm gonna take that saturation down. There we go. So it's just a very subtle effect if you look at before and after, before and after. So just super, super soft. So that's a fun way that you can add a touch of color using the linear gradient or a radial gradient or both together using your tint sliders, your hue slider, being sure that you control for saturation and control for either feather or the amount. So again, we can come in and reduce the amount so that it's just really subtle, um, really minor. Again, continue to reduce the saturation if you want, and there you go. All right, the second program would be using Topaz. So Topaz does gradients a little bit different, and it's actually the program I like to use in Topaz is Color Overlay. So let's click on Add Filter, I'm going to use Color Overlay, click on the Color option. What I love about adding color in Topaz is I'm going to grab the eyedropper tool, and you can come over and actually select the color direct from your image. So this is really handy. So I'm going to select this lighter pink shade. Now that it's selected, we can see it's overlaid the entire image. Now I can go to my mask and I'm going to actually use the brush, make a pretty large brush, and I'm just going to go ahead and remove it, being sure that I feather for the edges. So we want to just keep it really soft as it moves out. And that's just giving us this nice kind of painted look. Now we can go back to add filter, color overlay again, select the eyedropper down in the bottom left corner. And now I want to select this darker color. 
Now we can see that overlay's been added and we can reduce the opacity on that. We could also change our blend mode, but I'm gonna go ahead and add a mask. And this time I'm gonna use the spot mask because I really want this darker color, almost like a vignette. So I'm gonna come in and just make this spot pretty large and bring it around just so we have just a touch of that darker color. Very, very subtle. I'm going to bring that in tight. And we've got our roundness, our transition. I'm going to keep pretty smooth and our edge aware. So then I'm going to click OK there. And now we can see that darker color. So we've blended the light pink and the dark pink. We can also go to this color overlay and we could change the blend mode again. So if you wanted it to be screen, screen is gonna make it a little bit softer. You could do a color dodge. That's kind of coming in like that. You could do a lighter shade. I don't, I don't know that I like that one. Um, but you've got different options here. Lighten is probably um, the best or the normal. You also have dissolve, which makes things a little bit weird looking. So um, there's also the color. And then you do have luminosity. So luminosity can come in handy if you're wanting to just add some brightness. So for this example, I'm gonna keep it on normal. And so now you can see we've added that dark color, we've added the light, and here's before and here's after. All right, the third method is gonna be using Photoshop. So let's jump over Photoshop. Now this method is going to be very similar to Lightroom, except we're going to use the option that we have in Topaz, which is selecting our color. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is let's go ahead and add a um, transparent layer. I'm gonna click though on my image file and I want to go ahead and pick my color. So let's go over to the eyedropper tool. I'm gonna come in and get that pretty shade of light pink. And now I'm going to come down and add a gradient under adjustments. Now I want to angle the gradient and there we go and click OK. So now we've got that gradient fill, we've got our mask and I'm gonna come in and grab my brush and again at a 80%, I guess I could take it up to 100%, I'm going to brush off where I don't want that pink paint. And again, I wanna make it very soft around the edges. So just come in and really softly blend that so that it's very natural. And then what you can do is flip it back. Let's get a smaller brush. Then we can bring it back in those areas where we know we want it. Let's make sure that's on white. For some reason, I think my color, my color was off. There we go. Just bring back that pink in those center areas. So we don't have, you want everything to look nice and smooth. All right, so we've done some of our masking. Now I wanna do the darker color. So I'm gonna go back to my eyedropper. I'm gonna select the darker pink tones. We need to be on an image layer. There we go. Then we'll come down and add a gradient adjustment. This time I'm going to select radial. So we've got that circle and I'm going to reverse it. I want it to be on the outside of the image. There we go, click OK. And then I'm going to reduce the opacity way down so that we just have a touch of that darker pink. Now you still have a mask, so we can flip it to a black, grab our brush, and if you wanna make sure that you don't have too much of that dark color on your actual center of your subject, you of course can mask that off. All right, so three different programs, three different ways to add a touch of color. No matter which program you prefer, there are pros and cons to all three. The great news is you can always add a touch of color to your image, whether it's a landscape, a flower image, it really can give your backgrounds just a touch of cohesiveness and an artistic flair. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great day.